Welcome to Electra Online. GPS needs to be extremely accurate. The more accurate, the better. But there's another factor that actually impedes with our ability to make GPS as accurately as possible. And so we have to have a workaround for that as well. It turns out that we keep very accurate time on the Earth and very accurate time with the clocks, the atomic clocks on the satellites. But they also will differ due to one more factor, the Earth's rotation, and specifically the change in the Earth's rotation. The Earth's rotation is slowing down. And so every few years, the amount of time that it takes for the Earth to make one rotation will increase by about a second. And that needs to be compensated for if we want to keep very accurate time. Otherwise, our time on the Earth's atomic clock would differ with true time. True time, of course, depends upon our orientation with the sun and the stars. So, we have what we call UTC time and we have GPS time. So let's go and look at that a little bit more closely. GPS time is the time on each satellite in the GPS constellation. So we rely on those atomic clocks to keep track of the time when the satellites are up there in space. And it turns out that GPS time is kept by very accurate atomic clocks that have a very small drift of only about two nanoseconds per year. So they're extremely accurate. Well, it turns out that the effects of the relativity is far greater than the atomic clocks themselves. But we already know that we compensate for that. Now, these clocks are periodically synchronized by a ground control station in Colorado. But they don't want to make too many adjustments because if you do that too often, you may break those atomic clocks. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to meddle with those too often. So what happens is that the time on the satellite will begin to differ with the time on the Earth because on the Earth we use something called UTC time, which is Coordinated Universal Time. Now, it's a successor to something our older people like me might remember. We used to use Greenwich Mean Time, which is the time at longitude zero which goes through Greenwich in England, which is called the prime meridian. So the reason why we no longer use G GMT is because UTC is adjusted due to the variability of the rotation of the Earth. When needed, we add a single second periodically, and that's done every few years, because as the Earth slows down, we want to make sure that our atomic clocks on the Earth keep track with the real time on the Earth, which is going to slow down. In other words, a 24-hour day today will be a 24-hour and a few second day in the future. Matter of fact, the Earth's rotation is slowing down in such a way that 500 million years from now, a day will be 26 hours instead of 24 hours. So if you feel crunched for time, just realize that as time goes by, each day will become a little bit longer. So the need, what's interesting also is that the need for leap second, we call those leap seconds, cannot be predicted in advance. In other words, the change in the rotation of the Earth is not a smooth one. It varies. It goes a little faster, goes a little slower. It's constantly changing. It is slowing down, but the slowdown is not uniform, and that's due to uh, various reasons. Primarily, the gravitational forces between the Earth and the planets, and more so the Earth and the Moon. And the Moon is not always at the same distance, so the force of gravity between the Moon and the Earth is always changing. And so because of that, we cannot truly predict what that slowdown will be. But when we detect that the slowdown is added up to about a second, then we'll add a leap year. So in other words, we know that the UTC time is usually within one second of the mean solar time at zero longitude. Once it exceeds a second, then we all decide, hey, let's add another second to the UTC. And of course, when that happens, you realize then that the UC UTC time, which is the time that we use on the Earth, and the satellite time, the GPS time, will begin to diverge one second at a time as this progresses. And we need to keep track of that. And so sure enough, in one of the navigation messages, we will indicate the difference between the UTC time and the GPS time so that we know how to deal with that difference. What's interesting here is to realize that because of the moon, we have what we call a tidal bulge. And of course, the Earth will bulge towards the Moon because of the stronger gravitational force on this side of the Earth relative to this side of the Earth. So here we have a tidal bulge going outward. There we have a tidal bulge going outward in this direction. But the Earth's rotation is so fast, 
one rotation every 24 hours, that the tidal bulge actually gets ahead of that straight line between the moon and the earth before the, it can subside again. And so the tidal bulge actually will be a little bit ahead of that straight line between the moon and the earth. And the gravitational force, because this extra tidal bulge here, will be stronger on this side of the earth than on this side of the earth, and therefore it will actually slow down that rotation of the, uh, of the earth. In addition to that, the squeezing action, the tidal forces that cause the Earth to expand in the direction of the Moon, well, that causes energy laws. There's energy heat created. That heat created comes from energy, and the only place the energy can come from is the rotational energy of the Earth, and so that's another factor in which the Earth slows down. So bottom line, the Earth is going to, to rotate slower and slower, and so the time on the Earth and the time on the satellites are going to diverge over time, and so UTC time needs to be adjusted, and we need to know what that adjustment period is between the GPS and the UTC time in order for us to accurately be able to calculate the distances between the receivers and the satellites. So here, one more thing that we have to deal with to get very accurate time on the GPS satellites, and that is how it's done.